Over the last few years on this channel, we've made videos on trekking in the Nepalese Himalayas. We've backpacked through central and northern India to reach the world's largest festival, the Kumbh Mela. And we've even driven our own tuk-tuk right the way round the island of Sri Lanka. With travel having been put firmly on hold these last couple of years, people have been forced to look to destinations a little closer to home. So, while our passports gathered dust, we headed down to somewhere a little more familiar to the south coast of England to take on the Jurassic Coast Trek, a 155km coastal route winding its way through the counties of Dorset and Devon. Since 2011, this stretch of England's coastline has been designated a UNESCO heritage site, not just for its natural beauty, but also for its abundance of fossilised remains from the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. The traditional route starts from Exmouth and heads east along the coast, finishing in Stutland. Since we were starting out from London, we travelled to Sandbanks in Dorset, where we could get on a ferry to Stutland and start the trek doing the route in reverse. My trips would start at sort of on an international border somewhere or somewhere kind of interesting at the very least an airport but seeing as these are covid times this trip is starting on a ferry in the south of england bring on the jurassic coast First part of the trek, and it's uh, on a beach. I'm liking this trail already. God, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> So this first section is going to bring us into Studland. Now this is usually the last part of the section. This is kind of like the victory lap, if you like, at this beach here. But for us, because we're doing this trek in reverse, it makes a very nice beginning. And we're at the nudist beach. We're not in the nudist are, beach. Oh shit, we are. Holy shit. <laughs> totally. We're totally in the nudist beach. <laughs> Coming up to our uh, first point of interest for the trek, Old Harry Rock, which despite sounding like an old East End gangster, is actually just a rock. Marking the most eastern point of the Jurassic Coast, the three chalk formations known as Old Harry Rocks jut out into the sea, which has slowly eroded it from the mainland over time. 
No one seems quite sure who Old Harry was, with various stories stating it was either named after a local pirate, a 9th century Viking, or even the devil, who for some reason is called Harry. We're almost at the top, and then downhill all the way to Swanage. place. First port of call, it's definitely going to be the pub. Do you want to do the honours? To the pub! <laughs> the first town along our trek was the sleepy seaside town of Swanage. Formerly a small fishing village, Swanage became a popular holiday destination in the Victorian age before the advent of aeroplanes and we could start going to nicer places. Oh, surprise, surprise, it's raining in England, quite heavily. My waterproof cover for my bag. Safa got her waterproof cover for her bag. So, uh, Shoestring yeah. Vagabond didn't get his waterproof cover for his bag. It could be interesting. I'm not really sure how to move five cows, but uh Tonight we're gonna to be doing some wild camping. And our accommodation is gonna consist of rather coolly an abandoned quarry and an old smuggler's cave. We can set up our tent there, get a fire on, and cook some food. And that will be day one complete! close now, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, it's been a solid day of walking, uh, lots of ups and downs, a little cracky paths, so uh, now we're on a slightly more straight path, it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit easier to walk on this one, but, uh, we're hoping that that's some of the worst walking behind us, definitely hoping that this is some of the worst weather as well. Day two has started. Uh, mixed success last night. We got to uh, one set of quarries, old caves, but uh, 
they looked a little bit sketchy so we didn't really want to camp in them so lots of like falling rocks and things like that so yeah we saved the night in one set of quarries we're just walking on now uh to try to get to Winspit quarry uh, we're going to check that out for a bit cut our feet up for five minutes and then crack on with the rest of day two hopefully it looks like the weather is going to be getting slightly better The abandoned quarry at Winspit was a stone quarry in use until 1940, when it was then used as a naval base during the Second World War. Some of the caves have been closed for safety reasons, but you can still explore others. For any fans of old school cheesy British sci-fi, the site has been used to film scenes for Blake 7, as well as Doctor Who. So luckily, today, the weather's finally heating up, and it looks like we've got ourselves some seals. Amazing. Anyone hoping for good weather whilst trekking in England might require a bit of divine intervention. Luckily, this section contains the 800 year old St Aldelm's Chapel, perched on top of the cliffs, complete with some heavenly views. Very cool little chapel, that. Good little stopover, why not? So, this is going to be our trail for the next few days all the way along here. And then if you can see it, this really long sandy beach, I think, is at East Fleet. Uh, beginning of which, somewhere over here, is the halfway point of the entire trek. But first, we've got this to do. Ask anyone who does trekking what their least favourite part about it is, and they'll probably say, slowly gaining height and altitude all day, only to just suddenly lose it on one section before having to make it all the way back up again. So not only do your knees get killed on the way down, but the rest of you gets killed making it back up. Long way to go. Continuing along the coast, the path winds up to Hounds Toot, the biggest descent on this section of the trail, with the best views along the Jurassic Coast so far. to now Kingston. Not Kingston, Jamaica, but Kingston, Dorset. <laughs> to the pub. To the pub. I thought you were going to do a really bad Jamaican accent then. I'm so glad you didn't. After a short detour in land, we headed to the Scott Arms for lunch and other refreshments. 
complete from the comfort of the beer garden with views of nearby Corfe Castle. So, update. Leaving the Scots Arms. Scots Arms? Scott Arms? Scott Arms. Scott Arms. It was a pub. Uh, oh, we look really, sound really drunk probably. We literally did only have one drink. Uh, we were so knackered, uh, but we ate a shit ton of food. Uh, and after feeling like we wanted to sleep for about an hour, now we're full of energy and we're hitting the trails again. Bay, a mecca for a variety of water sports as well as geology enthusiasts, with the local clay frequently turning up fossils and even the odd dinosaur bone. Apart from windsurfing and paleontology enthusiasts, the fun police are also well represented here. We were told not to pitch our tent, but not being fans of England's archaic and outdated land laws, we kinda did it anyway. After a very, very long day of trekking, cliffside paths, getting lost, all with a massive backpack on my shoulders, it's very nice to take that backpack off, set up the tent, throw everything in, and have a little explore around the area. It's exactly what I'm doing now. It's still windy. I really start to appreciate how beautiful this uh, Jurassic Coast really is. It is stunning. Jurassic Coast Path, and uh, it's about 7 something a.m. Uh, we just left. Now we've got a bit of a problem for today because apparently over here we found out last night, in this bit, we should be walking over that right now, um, they're doing military training exercises, which is uh, great for us because that means we've got to walk all the way around. Um, so this is going to be a long, long road working day, but hopefully finishing up in Lulworth Cove. Uh, so it'll be tough, but you know, at least we're not going to get shot. Oh, that's that's the positive. What's his name? Good old Ivor. Let this like that. Thank you, Ivor. Yeah. The ledge. Ranger. Dorset Ledge. Uh, Dorset Ledge. That is Ivor for letting us know. We don't want to go there. There's tanks up there. <laughs> You'll get blown to bits. <laughs> so cheers, Ivor. Legend. <laughs> <sighs> from that point in the clouds all the way back here the last thing that you want to see 
is this? <sighs> so we're now walking to Wareham, which is several miles inland and pretty much basically the complete opposite direction that we want to be traveling along the coast. Uh, that's basically because this firing range or these this sort of military exercise uh, which we had no idea about um, the sort of exclusion zone so no cars no pedestrians nothing through this zone is about 10 times bigger than we thought it's a I don't know how many it's right a, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of square kilometers a lot of square miles so we are having to walk what is essentially supposed to just be blip, a little bit along the coast we're supposed to have to walk all the way around so yeah, this is happening. So to give you some idea of the exclusion zone, we just wanted to walk from here to here today. We've walked up here thinking we could go across here, but the exclusion zone is actually all the way up here, along and down. So we have to go all the way around just to get from here to here. <sighs> We've got to go even further around. With our plans for walking the next part of the coast scuppered, we had no choice but to head inland to Wareham. The highlights of this walk were this seemingly unending road, these trees, and the majestic A351. Luckily, waiting for us at the end point for the day would not be one, but two of the most famous parts of the Jurassic Coast, Lulworth Cove and Durdle Door. Easily the most iconic landscape along the Jurassic Coast and probably the most famous natural stone archway anywhere in the world, Durdle Door, along with its close proximity to several decent beaches including Lulworth Cove, attract hundreds of thousands of tourists every year. Like old Harry Rocks, it represents the remnants of the old limestone coastline slowly carved away by the sea. Now we've arrived in Lulworth Cove and uh, it's beautiful here and it's very, very nice to not have the backpacks on for a change. We've dropped those off at the campsite as so now for today. We're just having a little explore before something very, very important later on.
So day four on the Jurassic Coast and we're leaving lovely Durdle Door holiday camp. It's a bit like Butlins but we're more tents. But actually, pretty cool place. Got its own shop, a good shop, a pub. Uh, yeah, pretty good little uh, kitted out enterprise. Not too expensive. 20 something pounds for a pitch for the night between the two of us. So I'll take that. And you are right on the doorstep of all this. So yeah, first campsite of the trip was a success. We're a little bit hungover today. Celebrated a little bit too much maybe in Lulworth last night. Day four would offer up some of the best scenery of the trek so far, as well as some departing views of Durdle Door, several great beaches lie at the bottom of the huge limestone cliffs. Cliffs that unfortunately we'd be walking up and down with full packs. An effective, but not recommended, hangover kill. So Weymouth. Halfway point. Halfway point. Day four. smugglers in would have been rude not to really uh, thing is the, the Jurassic Coast path cuts right through the beer garden I think it had to be done really uh, right four and a half more miles to wait uh, so it'll take us a few more hours I think but we're getting there and then hopefully after that on to East Fleet still a long way to go Way, Weymouth, obviously, was and still is a quintessential English seaside town full of Georgian architecture, beach huts and fish and chips. Once an important trading link with continental Europe, nowadays the town's economy is based firmly around tourism, with probably the world's highest concentration of B&Bs. So 
we've left Weymouth, come out the other side of it, and now we're slowly heading our way up the coast again, back on the trail properly. Uh, we seem to be on uh, some weird thing that we can't escape apparently this trip, which is sort of military firing ranges. Uh, but for some reason we're allowed to walk through this one, but there's about a hundred thousand signs saying keep to the path, don't stray, there's unexploded ordnance, which is uh, reassuring. Uh, but you know, at least we don't have to go round, you know. So we might get blown to pieces walking down this path, but you know, at least we don't have to take a five hour detour to go around it, so swings and roundabouts really. Beautiful, beautiful summer's evening here on Dorset's Jurassic Coast. but we're totally wild camping. Because why not? I mean, we're probably wild camp anyway, right? Why not? When you're here... YOLO! YOLO! Good morning, day five from somewhere outside East Fleet and what might be just about the best campsite that I've ever had. So we're not exactly sure what our uh, destination is going to be today, but uh, one thing's for sure, we're just going to keep heading down west, west, west along the Jurassic Coast and just see how far we can get really. Um, so today is going to be a tough day. Today's route would be a long one, running parallel to Chesil Beach, the longest beach in the UK at almost 30 kilometres long, the trail would first take us through the village of Abbotsbury. From here we plan to pass the town of West Bay before going over the Golden Cap and finally dropping down into Lyme Regis. In case you were wondering what happened to Chesil Beach, don't worry, we're still walking past it. I, this might be the longest beach I've ever seen in my life. It's 
Taffy, what's your views on uh, Chesil Beach? Chesil Beach. Never ending. Hurts your feet. Finally leaving the beach behind us just there. Oh. Now we've got the golden cap, I think that's what it's called. Uh, a few steep ascents and ascents before we make our way down into Lyme Regis where we want to be around that area for tonight. So we're in West Bay. Seems like an interesting kind of a place. It is uh, sort of holiday home central, isn't it? But kind of cool. So now we're on the final push. So Lyme Regis, standing in our way, the Golden Cap, which from here looks a little bit daunting. To give you some idea of how far we've come today, so far, if you can see this on this camera, I'm not sure. This long, 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 long beach which goes all the way into the distance and just almost disappears. Halfway down that is where we started the day. We've still got a few more miles to go. Named after the orange sandstone the cliff is made from, the Golden Cap marks not only the highest point of the Jurassic Coast trek, but also the highest point on the south coast of England. The walk up is tough, but the reward is worth it. Almost there. Last serious incline of the trip, Golden Cap. Just a few meters left. Oh Jesus. That's it, final stretch of coastline. <sighs> Next stop, Lime Regis. We're finally done for today. That is over, well over 30 kilometers today. Up some uh, pretty tasty terrain. Waking up on day six of the trek, our plans to leave early and have any realistic chance of finishing the Jurassic Coast today were put on hold due to some famous English summer weather.
Eventually the weather cleared up as we got a moment to briefly check out Lyme Regis, a traditional coastal town on the border between Dorset and Devon. Dubbed the Pearl of Dorset, it's easily the most picturesque town along this part of the Jurassic Coast, complete with old pubs, tea shops and for some reason, the biggest seagulls known to man. So we've just left a uh, lovely, lovely Lyme Regis. It was a really, really cool town. Do you like it, Seth? Good. Uh, we appear to be in some sort of a jungle in Dorset, rather confusingly, right now. Um, slightly reminiscent of trekking in Nepal. Apart from, there's a few less monkeys and a lot, a lot less yaks. There is, however, a lot lot more mud. Marking the county border between Dorset and Devon, the jungle-like forest known as the Axmouth to Lyme Regis Undercliff is a 10 km winding trail complete with dense vegetation and, not unlike a jungle, it's got its fair share of ticks and mosquitoes too. Be nice to show you a bit more of this uh, section of the trail because it's it's really annoying to walk on but it's really really interesting it's like going back in time but unfortunately it's not really that much to show you because we can't see the sea we can't see inland it's just mud and vines everywhere And just like that, all of a sudden, we're back into fields. That is one of the weirdest sections of trek I think I've ever been on. Cool to see, but very, very glad that it's over. Eventually leaving the jungle, we crossed into Devon, and its first town on this side, Seaton. <sighs> so we're coming into Seaton at last, and that was a lot, oh. lot harder and took a lot, lot longer than I think either of us expected. Yes. So unfortunately for us, this is our last stop on the trek, obviously we did want to go to the very end in Exmouth but uh, we only had five and a half days to do this trek in which is, you know, five and a half days for what is uh, at least a nine day trek so uh, yeah, pretty optimistic there but we almost, almost did it I think half a day's more trekking we could have got there but as it is we've got a train booked and we've got to get home but we almost did it in five and a half days which I'm very, very happy about. Obviously it would have been really nice to finish off in Exmouth all the way, but what we've done in the time that we've had, I think has been pretty good. Pretty, good. pretty damn good. <laughs> Obviously we were slightly disappointed to have run out of time and not be able to finish the last section. With the downpour this morning keeping us from walking most of the day and making the path to Seaton almost impossible. With one extra day it would have been possible to reach our final stop, the port of Exmouth, just along the coast, over here. 
All in all, the Jurassic Coast is a great trek, and if you're looking for a multi-day long hike or a series of smaller walks in England, you'd be hard pressed to find somewhere as stunning as here. So that's it then, another shoestring vagabond trek done.